welcome to Vacation Station, hosted by Lisa and Nancy, editors of BigBlendMagazines.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Big Blend Radio's Thursday, or our first Thursday travel to Larry County show with the Sequoia Tourism Council. Uh, we love our first Thursdays because we get to focus on Tulare County, which is in Central California. It's home to Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Parks, Giant Sequoia National Monument, Giant Sequoia uh, National Forest. And so there's also all these amazing communities all surrounding these beautiful public lands. And of course, this is where you can go experience those giant giant sequoia trees and winter is the theme of today talking about what you can do outdoors in winter in the parks and the forest and the surrounding community so i encourage you to go to the main website which is discoverthesequoias.com to help plan your trip and you can also keep up with interviews we've done uh, over the years and other articles if you go to nationalparktraveling.com but we've got three special guests joining us i'm going to start with suzanne bianco uh, suzanne is from Visit Visalia. Visalia is the county seat of Tulare County, and you can go to their website, visitvisalia.com. So welcome back to the show, Suzanne. How are you? I'm great. Fantastic. Thanks for having us today. Yay, yay. Now, do you ever get snow in Visalia? No. Um, we oh. have had like snow and it's probably like hail that looks like snow. And so we always thought it was maybe like 20 years ago, I think we had a little, a oh. little bit of snowstorm, but Huh. Wow. And now that we bring this up, I bet I bet it happens this year just because yeah, <laughs> just because right. we brought it. it. I know well, it's kind of nice because you can be down in Visalia and look at the mountains with the snow on it and go and enjoy the mountains with the snow in them and then come back and not have the snow, not have to drive and in defrost. it. Defrost. <laughs> yeah, defrost. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And it's not that far to go to either, you know, the forest or the park from Visalia, right? No, not really at all. It's, um, you know, pretty convenient to um, lots of great outdoor recreational opportunities. So we feel very lucky we're to have all of that in our backyard. Yeah, I think all of Tulare County, when you think of it, all the communities, Tulare, uh, you've got Porterville, everyone, we've got Dinuba, uh, Lindsay, Woodlake, uh, I'm not missing anyone out, right? Exeter, we can't miss out Exeter. Mm -hmm. Um, all of these communities are so close. So it's really, you can stay in any of them, all have great hotels and uh, all kinds of, there's always events, there's always food and there's always shopping and there's yeah. always uh, wonderful produce that you can purchase too, because, uh, you know, Tulare County is the breadbasket of America. So fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, cheese, you know, there's all yeah. kinds of good stuff going on. So when you go there, you do want to say cheese when you stand by a sequoia tree. <laughs> but I don't think the sequoia trees want to eat the cheese. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> so we're going to go over to Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Park. And we've got Rebecca Patterson joining us. And this is the website for Sequoia and Kings Canyon. It is nps.gov forward slash S-E-K-I. We always say Seiki. So welcome, Rebecca. How are you? Good morning. I'm well, thanks. Thanks for having me. Hey, we're cool. excited about this. Uh, Sequoia and Kings Canyon, we're going to bring Denise on in a second. Denise Alonzo from Sequoia National Forest, because you guys are all connected. It's, they all have these giant trees. and um, But you're, like we were saying, not too far from the communities. But wintertime, I do want to let people know that you may want to get snowshoes for your feet. And uh, mm -hmm. you've got to do some things for your tires, because they want to be warm and have some traction, right? So we may need to be aware of that coming up. Yes, absolutely. Uh, something that I think people from out of the area don't necessarily realize is that you come into the parks at pretty low elevation. So like Suzanne was saying, that place where you rarely see snow, but by the time you actually get to the sequoia trees, you're going to be up at 6,500, 7,000 feet of elevation. So you gain a lot of elevation and the weather systems change completely. So even if you think it's raining down here, why would I need tire chains today? You are probably going to be required to have them if there's any kind of weather going on up in the parks. And it can mm. change. I mean, even in the yeah. summer, we've been hiking where all of a sudden you need layers, basically. Bring the layers and bring the hot chocolate. <laughs> yeah, we expect that it's going to be 25, 30 degrees cooler up in the Sequoias than it is at the entrance station. 
Ah, ah. Oh. So I want to bring Denise on. Denise Alonzo, again, from Sequoia National Forest and the Giant Sequoia National Monument. Again, all connected. Everything's this. This is just one of those, you know, beautiful places that everywhere you turn, there's nature. And uh, the mm -hmm. website for Sequoia National Forest is fs.usda.gov forward slash Sequoia. So welcome back, Denise. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you. And thank you for having me on this blistery, cold winter's day. <laughs> See, this is it. It's it is getting cold already, you know. Um, Denise, uh, in the forest, is it the same thing as the parks in regards to elevation? Because the forest and the monument kind of weave in and out of the parks and and go down to the. It's it's yeah. It's kind of all over the place, yeah, which we, is good. <laughs> that is correct. Yeah, driving up from the valley floor, you really don't know what to anticipate, but anticipate the worst. Uh, anticipate mm. that you might get a winter storm or you might encounter fog. Uh, as you drive up the mountainside and it's going to be blistery cold and you might need snow chains and most definitely in the winter months I wouldn't go anywhere in the mountains without snow chains in your car mm. and be no. prepared with winter clothing and excess food and water and let somebody know that you're traveling to the mountains so that they can expect you to return and if you don't return they can reach out to law enforcement and perhaps notify somebody to go try to find you and rescue you if that were to be necessary and mm. you know we talk about this because we mm. want you to have a good time mm. you know because you really mm -hmm. it's magical um, we've been into both places in the snow it wasn't a huge amount of snow and we made it up there without uh, playing with car tires and you know it, and but it's just absolutely pristine. And I think we always talk about the sequoias and, and our national parks and forests. A lot of times we talk about them as the summer attraction. But I think it's really neat to kind of change the scenario up a little bit. It's also better for our land to not all be there at the same time over and over, kind of give it a little bit of a rest. But it's a completely mm -hmm. different experience. So, Rebecca, I want to go to you. Tell us a little bit about the park. I mean, it's different, obviously, in summer. But uh, you can still, you know, get out and hike around, right? And maybe do some snowshoeing or I don't cross country skiing, yeah. but. Yeah, absolutely. Easy, There's right? a lot of people that are, you know, that sort of small but dedicated uh, group of winter aficionados in the parks. And more and more people are discovering what a pleasure it is to explore up there when it is snowy. Um, I would recommend definitely to wait until a weather event is over. Maybe don't visit while that snow is falling, but uh, mm. afterwards, once the roads are cleared, that's a really special time to be up there. The trees are just absolutely beautiful. The red bark against the white snow. And, you know, you're probably just going to want to plan something maybe a little bit more sort of humble in scope than what you might do in the summer. You know, maybe if you're a five mile a day hiker, maybe today you're just going to snowshoe for a mile and a half or something like that. Uh, but getting out to the Congress Trail or even just going to see the General Sherman tree or the General Grant tree in the snow is an absolutely magical experience. And a lot of uh, a lot of families from the valley, I think, are very, very excited to see snow at all. Um, and there's lots of opportunities to throw a snowball at your brother or sister and just uh, cool. sort of out there and have some fun. As well as <laughs> so what about that. wildlife you... say that again so what about wildlife viewing so the bears of course are our big wildlife attraction probably more than anything else but at this time of year they are mostly hibernating mm. so depending on who you are that's either bad news or good news some people mm. would really like to not see a bear when they visit the parks <laughs> um but what you can do if you're a birder, uh, winter is great birding time. If you keep your eyes out, keep, take your binoculars with you to enjoy some, some birds that are out there and keep an eye out for chipmunks and squirrels and all kinds of little things that are running around. Also following tracks in fresh snow can be really, really fun. I was gonna ask too, doesn't the Sequoia Parks Conservancy also do events and programs in the winter or do they do it just in the summer? I know they do some guided hikes and, and some history um, events too. Yeah, Sequoia Parks Conservancy, our nonprofit partner, is absolutely out there doing uh, doing programs, doing uh, doing snowshoe hikes and things of that nature. And uh, we at the National Park Service also do ranger programs in the winter, um, especially out of the Grant Grove Visitor Center up in the Kings Canyon area and also in the Giant Forest Museum. So that might be a little snowshoe hike or maybe just a, a talk with a ranger to tell you a little bit more about some flora or fauna or maybe something historical in the parks. So uh, you can find those offerings on our website or you can also just inquire at the visitor centers when you come through. 
Awesome. And going to the visitor centers in the museum, uh, they're like the giant forest museum is like, I would say with, is a must do on your way. Mm -hmm. I mean, just so you get your perspective of what you're viewing with the trees, especially, yeah. you know, to understand mm -hmm. all the different ecosystems. Denise, I want to go back to you over in the forest. Let's talk a little bit about what you can experience during winter. Um, I know that you, you can go cross shoes. Uh, I was going to cross shoe. Was it snowshoe? <laughs> Snowshoeing? You can tell I've never done this, right? Uh, cross <laughs> cross country skiing. I, one day it'll happen. You know, I always put yet at the end of my sentences. I want to watch. I know. You can actually all, um, also do snowmobiling in the National Forest, whereas you can't in the National Park. But in the National Forest, we do require that you stay on the roads, but a lot of the roads are closed during the winter months because the Tulare County doesn't keep them open year round. The ones at higher elevations that are covered with snow, you are more than welcome to bring your snowmobile and venture out on your snowmobile on those highways that are shut down in the winter months. So there's that opportunity, as well as cross country skiing and snowshoeing and just playing in the snow, sledding up and down the small hills that you can find. A lot of people just go up and try to find a, a small hill that they can let their kids enjoy sledding down, you know, a short distance. We do ask that you pack it in, pack it out in the wintertime, just as you do in the summertime. So if yeah. you choose to go camping in the winter months, you are more than welcome to camp anywhere in the National Forest unless it's signed. Uh, we do have some people who like to camp in the snow, believe it or not. Uh, it's just a different experience, but you can do that in the National Forest just anywhere. Um, but we do ask you to pack it in, pack it out, come prepared and uh, have a good time. So wait a minute, getting camping in the snow. Now I heard from a friend of mine that oh. is a is a crazy person. He told me that the best way to go camping in the snow is you need to be naked in your sleeping bag. Do you think yeah, that's right. true, that it helps uh -uh. in the heat? No. no, I don't think I would prefer that. <laughs> I think I would be fully clothed. As a matter of fact, with, um, you know, a hat and, and long clothing. Inside You're not getting me naked bag. in a sleeping bag. That's no, not happening. Not. These are. This is going to be a list of things to ask park and forest rangers. Do we get naked yeah. in a sleeping bag in the snow? You know, <laughs> it, when you when you think about it, things can happen. And the last you thing you want to do run. is to be naked in the snow, looking around your tent to see if there's somebody, no. you know, lost, <laughs> knocking on the wrong tent door. I as yeah. it were. I know this is. Yeah. Nice. Make it yeah. doesn't work. A midnight no. trip to the late, nearest tree to use the restroom probably wouldn't be very functional if you were naked in your sleeping <laughs> bag. You could <laughs> run and hide from tree to tree. <laughs> you know, with boots on, you'll be naked with right. boots on. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Rebecca, mm -hmm. um, I wanted to ask you, can you camp in, in winter in the national parks? You can. There's more restrictions on it in the parks than there are in the forest. So you can't mm -hmm. just free camp everywhere, like uh, Denise was saying, is possible in the National Forest. But we have a couple of campgrounds that remain open through the winter. Uh, Potwisha Campground is at fairly low elevation, so you're unlikely to be camping in the snow if you camp there. Um, and that campground is still on a reservation-only system for the winter. So you'd go to recreation.gov to make a reservation to use that campground. If you are interested in camping in the snow in the parks, um, Azalea Campground is open in Grant Grove, at least one loop of it is, and that will remain open throughout the winter uh, as long as they're able to keep it fairly clear, keep the roads reasonably safe to get there, and that is uh, first come, first serve. And then uh, talking about like the roads through Kings Canyon, I know you go to Hume Lake and, and there's General Grant Grove, and so you're going through the forest and everything between Sequoia National Park and Kings Canyon. So the General's Highway connects everybody. Um, is that open throughout the winter? The General's Highway um, typically closes during the winter between Grant okay. Grove and the Giant Forest. Okay. Um, we actually are probably going to end up closing that section during an upcoming winter storm that's supposed to be basically starting tomorrow. Um, we're likely to close that section at least for a while, but we will try to, to not have it closed for the entire winter starting then. But um, okay. often around, you know, around the holiday or the new year, we just close that section of the road and we keep it closed for the remainder of the winter just to uh, to reduce the burden on our maintenance staff and our roads people. 
so it's always good to go to the park and forest websites um, to look for updates because things change all the time. And I, I say that also about going to, you know, the community websites because as we know, things change all the time and expect mm -hmm. that when you travel or do anything. And hey, you, there might be a pop up event that you want to go to and you never know. So, you know, Suzanne, I'm really glad you're on the show today because like we're saying, you could plan a trip and then all of a sudden the weather says, well, ha ha, <laughs> and you get to Tulare County, but there's things you can do. And uh, tell us a little bit though, lodging wise, what are some of the options? Cause I think you have a little bit of everything, right? Yeah, I mean, that's one of the advantages to gateway communities that are just outside of these um, great resources that we have outdoor resources like the National Park and the National Forest is that we do have that infrastructure. So um, there are lots of hotels in our communities from, you know, small boutique hotels to your limited service and then full service if you really want to have it all. So lots of great options there. Um, there is has been quite a few new hotels being built in, in Visalia alone. I know we've had um, three or four new hotels, including the Darling Hotel, which is a, a charming boutique um, style hotel in the Art Deco style that opened up during COVID, um, has a, a rooftop bar and lounge and, um, you know, it's, nice. it doesn't have a lot of rooms, like 32 rooms, I think, um, but it's uh, just a really unique experience. And it's just a block off of the main street um, in downtown where there's lots of restaurants and entertainment options along there. Um, we are really excited that Great Wolf Lodge will be coming to Tulare County. Um, it's going to take a little while to get wow. that built and, and in, but that's a really exciting um, um, item on the for in the forecast. So um, yeah, each of our communities has a selection of hotels, the casino down down in Porterville um, has a, a new, um, they've built a new facility there with some rooms, uh, hotel rooms. Really? Um, wow. Yeah, that's one moving, was, the Eagle, Eagle Mountains moving. I know they are moving into Porterville mm -hmm. and that's happening this month, right? In December. Yeah. Think, meaning it's opening. Yeah. It's open now or. Yeah. The new, um, I did, this, uh, I'm not it's exactly sure it. when they're, but yeah, very, very close. Very, very close. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So okay, that's very exciting. Open. So yeah, and that's mm. a great, um, Porterville is a great um, gateway into the National Forest area Forest, where yeah. 100 Giants are, is, um, and some of that area for, um, especially in the summertime, those are great recreational opportunities there. And um, and the Ponderosa, does that, Denise, is the Ponderosa open, um, that there's that lodge that we stayed at, is that open in the winter? Yes, it is. And that's oh, a cool. destination location for a lot of people who do travel up the road because it's one of the few places that you can get a cup of hot chocolate or something to eat. Uh, and it is open year round and they have rental cabins associated with the Ponderosa Lodge that you can rent a cabin there uh, for the winter time year round. They have rentals and a few motel rooms, I do believe. We um, stayed in it. We stayed there. It is yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like it's the fun feel like you're in the Swiss Alps in a way because mm -hmm. you're being up and then the restaurant and they have dogs that this yes <laughs> yeah you know dogs. we always have dogs around us but the the restaurant is insanely amazing I mean you wouldn't believe this food out in the middle of the forest it is delicious and then you've got shopping there too they've got an amazing store not only for necessities if you're camping or suddenly you need mittens or gloves they've got everything but then they've got all kinds of gifts so that was like our last trip that was quite mm -hmm. an, uh, an experience going up there. So and that's cool. The Pier Point uh, Resort, which is about halfway up the hill uh, at Camp Nelson. It's also open year round. It has motel rooms. And so there's another opportunity. If you don't want to go all the way to the 7,000 foot mm. level at Ponderosa, you could go to the 5,000 foot level and still get into the snowy area, but not have to drive as much on the snow. Oh, come on. If you're five mm. feet, 5,000, go the other 2,000. <laughs> get up there. Get up there. Are you, Rebecca, don't you have a lodge as well up, up inside the park that people can stay at? The Wuxachi Lodge in Sequoia National Park. See, uh, you needed to pronounce it. <laughs> yes, Wuxachi. <laughs> um, they remain open throughout the winter. Um, there is no indoor lodging currently available in Kings. So the John Muir Lodge is not open this winter. Um, but the Wuxachi Lodge remains open. Okay. And also, Suzanne, going back to um, Tulare County, you've got all the different brand hotels as well. So, um, you know, for families too. And speaking of as bed and breakfast, I know that there's some bed and breakfast and farm stays like at Farmer Bob's, they've got a, a real farm stay. 
in an orange grove, which is, mm -hmm. um, but there's also, you know, one of the things we experienced is uh, vacation rentals, a lot of that. And I'm seeing you guys post that a lot too on, on social media for Discover the Sequoias. So everyone, you can follow it at Sequoia Tourism Council on Instagram, Facebook, and, and Twitter, right? Yeah, yeah, there are, um, you know, of course, with especially with COVID, I feel like there was a real boon in the um, number of vacation rentals. So lots of those are out there. Um, so really any type of um, lodging that is great for a family, they can find in Tulare County. So I think that um, um, especially in the wintertime when some of the um, lot in park lodging is limited, more limited. Um, if a visitor looks at some of those gateways just outside of the, the parks and forest areas, they'll find lots to choose from. So, um, and then, like I said earlier, you know, it's, you can go and enjoy the snow. You can go enjoy the parks and the forests and really get out there and then come back to uh, town and um, have a great dinner and some entertainment options and a nice, warm, comfortable bed <laughs> for the night. Well, and speaking of that dinner, dinner is a big deal. Lunch, dinner. I mean, you've got everything. You can eat your way around the entire county. Hello. You know, well, it's a good balance, Nancy, don't you think? Yes, so, no, oh, we, absolutely. We'll go snow, uh, yeah. snow, snowshoeing and then we can pig out, you know, because there's <laughs> out. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's a balance. Uh -oh. It's a balance, you know. Yeah. But the restaurants are amazing. I heard that um, in Porterville that Fugazi's, we went there. It's now mm -hmm. turning into the palace. Um, that was some news I saw on social media that that's turning in. Wasn't that a historic hotel, the palace? Um, well, the palace hotel, um, historic pa palace hotel is in Visalia, the one I'm aware of. There might be one oh. down in Porterville as well, but um, the palace hotel is um, right in downtown Visalia on Main Street from the 1800s. It's no longer a hotel, um, but um, the building is still there and the um, the main floor, the ground floor area is filled with retail as it was back when it was a hotel. Oh, cool. Cool. There's a lot going on. A lot of change happening. And uh, mm -hmm. it's, that's it's really good. exciting to see that. And a lot of, um, you know, with, I, you know, keep, I keep bringing up COVID and I kind of don't want to talk about that time of our lives, but, you know, um, some restaurants didn't make it, but a lot of restaurants really reinvented themselves um, mm -hmm. or um, have spent that time planning to open. So, um, you know, I know throughout the county, lots of new places are opening. There's a new French bakery that's opening in Visalia. It just actually just opened, um, sort of soft opened last week. Um, and that's really exciting. They have some really beautiful um, items there and, um, you know, steakhouses and, and um, you know, lots of other things that are soon to open. Um, you know, construction has been ongoing. And so there's a lot happening. And if you've been to Tulare County, you haven't been to Tulare County today because there's a lot of things that have changed and happened throughout the county um, over the last few years. So it's an exciting time to, um, you know, be looking at tourism in our area. So uh, and there's a lot of walking too, like all the downtowns, you can go on historic walking tours and also go look at public art. If it's too cold, drive around and go on a treasure hunt, an artistic treasure hunt of the communities. You know, there's museums to go to, which to me, your museums are fascinating because it just such a, it's such a multicultural experience of showing people that came in to the communities and really settled and farmed the land. And your 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 museums are state of the art and there's you know, so much for families to do too a lot of um you know attractions for kids so that's great but before you all go we want to know one thing that you really want to do this winter that people should know about that we haven't talked about like a true winter in Tulare County experience so let's start with you Suzanne what a winter weekend because you get it you get a whole weekend off <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, what would I like to do? I think that um, an experience that a visitor should have once in their lifetime is to see sequoia trees in the snow. You know, we see them a lot during the winter, during the summertime, and you know that's really great. But to see them in the winter time is just a completely different experience. The snow sort of dampens the sound, so you have a more and the crowds are fewer crowds. But that cinnamon bark against the white snow, I think, is just really a once in a lifetime mm -hmm. must do. So that would be my. That would be my one item. Awesome. Hmm. What about you, Rebecca? I would recommend that people come up and join us in Grant Grove for our 97th ever Trek to Tree 
um, which is a special winter event um, that we do um, in cooperation with the community of Sanger, um, where uh, you can come and walk up to the General Sherman tree, which is officially the nation's Christmas tree, and see it in the mm -hmm. snow. Usually there's some carolers that will sing and people who will do talks about, um, you know, sort of in commemoration of the holidays and giving thanks. And uh, also the General Grant tree is uh, is considered the world's only living uh, shrine to uh, to service members, to people in the mm -hmm. military, uh, both current and past. And so usually we will uh, talk about giving some thanks to those folks and all of their great service and sacrifices that they've made. And it's just generally a really special event and it's uh, it's meaningful and it's really fun to be out there with a big bunch of people mm -hmm. doing that together. So I yes. uh, definitely recommend checking that out. That's on December 11th coming right up. Mm -hmm. Oh, that really that is. Nice. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Is that a fee-free entry day to the park too as well? Yes, it is, Suzanne. So no fees that day to uh, to enable people to come into that event and not have any barriers. That's special. Cool. And speaking of, um, you know, the holidays, the winter um, events, uh, Rebecca, this is a good time for people to buy an annual pass for stocking stuffers, right? I mean, what and, and it's really better if they do it at the park itself. I mean, you can buy them online, but I'm just saying, um, bring it on in. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I mean, you can you can come buy them from us or you can absolutely buy them online. Either way works. Um, but there's a, a beautiful image. Actually, it's from Sequoia Kings on the annual pass this year. So that's exciting. And uh, if you're not familiar with the annual pass, that will get you into all federal lands. So that's mm. parks, forests, uh, BLM that charges a fee, you name it, uh, for one year. And it's $80. And so if you just imagine that, you know, maybe you're going to go to Sequoia Kings twice in Yosemite once this year, uh, it's already paid for itself. So and it's, it's for a, the it's whole family really in the car. It's per yes. car, right? Uh -huh. Yes, it's for the for a car full of people. And so, then the uh, senior pass is really cool. Yes, mm -hmm. uh -huh. the same price, $80, except for, for the senior pass, um, it's good for forever. It's not just an annual pass. So uh, so that's a great deal as well. I Also, is it true that didn't they just pass something that veterans can get passes? Yes, uh -huh. there is a brand new, uh, hot off the presses, new military pass uh, for current or, or, or former service members. Um, and so uh, you can learn a little bit more about that if you just bring uh, some form of your military ID or, or sort of official documentation of your service with you to the parks, you can get that right at the gate. And that's like a cool. lifetime thing. Yes, that's, it is. Mm -hmm. Also, a that is a, and again, yay. a brand new thing. That's fantastic. That's awesome. I love it. I love yeah. it. Denise, going to you, um, you know, when we talk about these permits and not permits, it's a different thing. A pass is different than a permit because we go in the forest and, and we have our permits and we like hang it like, hello, we're here. And then we go, well, what happens? I mean, because sometimes you have to have permits for different things. So when you've got this, you know, public land permit, basically, that doesn't mean like if you need a permit for something different, you need to go get that permit, right? Like, Correct. like, even like when you want to go backpacking and stuff, that's a little different for both entities. Correct. Yes, there are some things in the national forest that do have an entrance fee or a use fee that um, rep that are uh, free with the America the Beautiful Pass that we were just talking about. But there's other things like campground concessionaires and other user fees that aren't necessarily represented under that pass. Um, so there are a few fees that you need to be aware of when you visit other, you know, natural resources. Um, Fish and Wildlife, for instance, has their own sets of fees. The state parks have their own sets of fees. Uh, so just be aware when you travel to locations, uh, you know, of what you need to be prepared for as far as uh, permits and fees. Wilderness permits are something totally different. Uh, those are free. A campfire permit, for example, is something you still need to obtain, and it's also free. There's just um, information that you need to be aware of when you visit these areas. But the America the Beautiful Pass is an awesome thing to have. I have one. I buy one every year for myself. So, um, and my family. And something else that we haven't mentioned is there is a fourth grader pass that fourth graders can get for under the wow. Every Kid Outdoors program. And they can get that for a year at no charge. They just Google Every Kid Outdoors and uh, they can find, uh, be able to print their voucher. They can bring their voucher to any place that issues the passes and they can get a free annual pass under the fourth grader program. Wow, it's wow. awesome. I love these That's programs. Cool. So Denise, in closing, what is your winter wonderland must do? 
I want to go up and just experience the snow. I haven't been up into the snow for a few years. And I, I like to go up and then spend a few hours until I get really cold. I bring a vat of hot chocolate with me so that I can drink it on the way down the hill back to my cozy home in, in the valley floor where it's much warmer. So awesome, awesome. getting out Every to the snow. The snow is magic. You got to make the snow angel and then have your mm -hmm. hot chocolate. That's awesome. That's right. Yep. Everyone, again, the website is discoverthesequoias.com. We're here every first Thursday talking about Tulare County, Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Park, Sequoia National Forest, and Giant Sequoia National Monument. Uh, so keep up with us at bigblendradio.com. Thank you so much for joining us, ladies. Thanks, ladies. Thanks and, for having us, Lisa. Thank you. And <clears throat> don't get naked in your sleeping bag. <laughs> no, don't do it. Happy bye -bye. holidays. Thank you. Happy all. holidays bye -bye. to you. Bye-bye.